This game shows a pretty nice attack by White uh, in the Spanish opening. Yeah, it was played by Zbigniew uh, Kracek and Alexei Shirov. Um, so the game went on with e4, e5, and we get into this line of the Spanish opening where Black plays uh, b5 and bishop to c5. Uh, it's a pretty sharp line because Black exposes himself um, to a couple of things while these pawns are advanced so that they can become a target. Um, secondly, this bishop also can become a target because, well, white will play c3 and d4. Um, and also because the bishop doesn't go to e7, at some point white might be able to play uh, bishop to g5 and pin that knight. So, on the, on the bright side, um, black gets to develop his pieces, all of them, pretty actively, and this uh, provides for a pretty complicated play. So, first uh, things first, white uh, undermines the pawn chain that black has created, and he goes a4. This forces black to commit to either bishop to b7 um, or rook to b8. And um, in this game, black plays rook to b8. Now white opens up the a-file and prepares to play c3 and d4. Uh, black uh, reinforces the pawn on d5. That's important because after d4, he doesn't take on d4. Instead, he goes uh, to b6, where he will exert the pressure on the white center. That's sort of the idea behind this bishop development. Now, white's typical idea in this line is to go after this pawn, and he usually goes with knight to a3, um, but uh, in this game he initially prevents uh, the bishop from coming out to g4, because it's still eyeing that square, it still wants to pin the knight, especially because the pawn now is on d4, and black is putting a lot of pressure on this pawn, and uh, to eliminate this knight would be useful. So first, white uh, defends this um, this knight by preventing bishop to g4. Uh, now black has to castle. And now, just to stop worrying about um, the knight possibly taking here, possibly after bishop to b7, um, white defends on um, e4. Um, now black has to continue with development, so he goes bishop to b7. Um, and then he's, he's, like if white does nothing, um, black will just uh, play rook to e8 as normal in the Spanish opening, then at some point knight to a5 and attacking here. So um, white has to do something quick and he attacks the pawn on b5. Um, black simplifies and attacks the bishop. Um, so the bishop retreats and the downside of this um, the downside of this uh, development of the knight to a3 is that now after black plays b4 the knight actually has to go back so it seems like it just wasted some time but it's not so simple because well now it, it can go to some other squares. Um, black continues to attack the white center because he can't let white just sit there with two pawns on d4 and e4. So he goes c5, uh, black pins the knight, sorry, white pins the knight, the bishop goes to h4, and now um, this is the critical moment of the game. The best line for black is to do something like this, take on d4, and after um, knight takes on d4, um, the knight no longer controls <coughs> the g5 square. So um, that means that black should be able to either immediately or after a couple of um, moves, he should be able to play pawn to g5, force this bishop to go away from h4, and then capture on e4. And this position should be fine for black. His knight on e4 is very active. And the bishops are looking on the king at white's king side, so th this position is just great for black. So 
uh, instead in this game Sheriff made uh, one mistake and this is his only mistake in this game <clears throat> that was enough for him to be kind of to kind of go down he played pawn to b3 immediately and now um, white took and now he made a second mistake he played pawn to g5 uh, and this allows white a very nice sacrifice so Krachuk uh, took on g5 and now this pin is really really difficult to deal with and what's worse is that white can bring more pieces to attack this knight and and to attack the the black king side so one idea is to play rook to a3 and rook to f3 or rook to g3 that will be just really deadly and sheriff wasn't able to recover from this and he lost to a lower rated um, opponent here so you now took on d4 <coughs> But now white's not forced to capture on d4. Well, he, he can and he shouldn't. Instead, he just goes on with rook to a3. And um, I guess at this point it's already clear that it's going to be probably impossible for black to save this. He tried to reinforce uh, d4 with the, um, <clears throat> with the knight. And then to, to possibly transfer this knight to the king side. The problem is that all of black's pieces are stuck on... The queen side and this knight uh, and the king, they're really uh, kind of left on their own there. So, should have tried to bring back the knight to c6 first, and after bishop a2, freeing up the third rank for the rook, he tried to put that knight to e5, but it doesn't really help because after rook g3 and the, the king leaving the g file, white just goes with f4 and the knight on. Um, <coughs> e5 is just a target and um, I mean he if he had stayed on um, if he tried to go to g6 he'd probably run into f5 eventually so he tried to support the knight on f6 um, so that there's some extra defense but still e5 comes in and this pin knight um, suffering while this knight on f6 is going down and should have desperately tried to play d3 check King retreats. He takes on e5, um, but that doesn't fundamentally solve the problem of um, the knight on f6. And and white gets back his piece, and the attack just continues and continues. And black is unable to save the king. So rook e8 takes, and now the queen is is probably coming either to h4 or in a different scenario to h5 and how do you possibly stop this should have tried to play um, queen e8 but um, white found uh, yeah and the idea is that if, if queen d1 and queen e2 but instead white found a nice move bishop to e3 and the idea is that now the rook goes to g7 and um, checkmate is following that so should have tried to take um, on f6 just so that rook g7 doesn't happen but now queen to f2 and now the queen comes along the f file hitting f6 and possibly coming to f5 um, things are not looking good and um, black try queen to c6 but bishop b6 um, the queen comes to f5 and now queen to g5 and here should have resigned um, um, the problem the basic problem is that if he goes rook to g8 then a check happens and uh, if he tries to block then white takes and then the queen falls on b6 and there's no other way to defend against queen h6 so in this position should have resigned and he is uh, the authority on this line this line with um, b5 and bishop c5 so uh, this just shows that in interesting in sharp lines like this uh, uh, like even the very strong grandmaster who specializes in the line he can lose um, through just making a couple of inaccurate moves uh, and also it's a great game by Hrachek who really was not afraid of his famous opponent and just um, played the good moves and one as a result.